Welcome everyone. In this tutorial, we will be creating low poly art out of any portraits or images that you may have using Grasshopper. During the course of this tutorial, I will show you the logic behind the components that we will be using. Along the way, I will also show you any tips and tricks that we may come across. So hopefully you have learned something new at the end of this tutorial. Before we begin, I would like to assume that you have basic knowledge of Rhino and Grasshopper. We will also be using a couple of plugins for Grasshopper that will make it easier for us to build our definition. We will be using the following Millipede, Fat Tools, Elephant, and Weaver Bird. More details are in the description of this video. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. Alright. Um, before we can start, we need an image. You can use your own, of course, whether it be portraits or landscape or aerial photos, whatever image you want to turn into low poly, or you can source one out from a stock images website. I uh, found one that's really good, and I believe uh, it's called pexels.com. Now, the good thing about this website is, except um, besides that, it has a lot of stock photos, a lot of good quality ones, high res. Uh, these photos you can use for free, personally and commercially, so that's a good plus. So I would say it's browse a bit if you fancy any of these. Uh, if not, if you can't make a choice, uh, you can also use this one, which is the one that we'll be using um, in this tutorial. You can either search up the photographer's name or you can type in the URL here. I'll link that also in the description of the video. Okay, uh, now we can get into Rhino and Grasshopper. I will start it here. Uh, we will start with a component called the image sampler. It's this one. And it's located params input this one. Uh, and then we can double click on it to open the window where you can select our image using the file path button here in the browse. I advise you to leave everything as default as possible, so don't touch anything. Just browse for the image that you downloaded, put it somewhere on your hard drive, select that, and click OK. Leave the domains as is. We're going to uh, correct that later on. You can scale this so that it proportion uh, to your liking or not. It doesn't really matter that much. Domain remains the same. What we can start with is let's create a rectangle, sort of boundary box, that will contain our image. Uh, and for the size of the boundary box, what I advise to do is take the resolution and take that into your width and height. So it's 416 and 616. So we can create a slider. Another tip about creating sliders is. Um, you can type in sliders, uh, then you can see the number slider. What you can also do is, if you type in a number like that, you will also create a slider that's based on this number. So for example, if I type in 1000, it will create a slider from 0 to 1000. But if I create like 555, it will create a slider from one, 0 to 1000 and put my number at 555. As you can see here. But we're not going to do that. We're going to need a lot more than that. So we're going to create a slider that ranges from 1000 to 10,000. Because we're going to be working with a lot of high rest images and 10,000 pixels uh, would be approximately the maximum that you're probably going to go. Uh, another tip is if you want to duplicate this, you can also control CV or you can drag it with your left mouse and then press Alt. Then you see the plus sign and let go. And then you have created two sliders that with the same properties. Um, and then we will input these numbers. I believe this was 616. Let's double check. That's right. The X is our width and the Y is our height. And if I zoom that to view, that's possibly the good size. Okay, now we have our grid. What we're going to do is we are going to make this into a boundary surface so we can mesh this later on. And the components, uh, the first external component we're going to be using is from Millipede. Uh, I have it here. 
I think on the geometry and the company is called discretization discretization oh my god it's really hard to pronounce uh, plug in your surface into the b-wrap it's missing one more input I think that's the mesh size yeah it is and for the mesh size I will do the same uh, 10 to 50 and then start with a very large mesh size mesh size uh, <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of waiting to do uh, towards the end of the tutorial when you want to change something. So start always very coarse. Plug that in here. Now we have a mesh. Um, you may see lines already on your screen. Uh, those mesh lines, the triangle lines. Uh, you don't see it on mine because I have it disabled. Which is this one. On the display, preview match edges. So if I turn it on, you see approximately the same that you will also have on your monitor. Uh, Control M was the shortcut key to hide and unhide it. Uh, what I usually do from millipede component, I usually connect it to a redundant component like this one, mesh to mesh, just so I have this more uh, clearly visible instead of those small, small outputs and inputs. Um, okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to um, we will need our mesh, so we're gonna explode our mesh into faces using mesh explode and connect it there. Uh, something is still oh this one. Uh, you may notice that I'm turning it on and off very quickly uh, because I have the shortcut that's actually these two the visibility which is control Q. I have that mapped to one of my mouse buttons, so that's why I can quickly turn it on and off. But control Q will be for you the shortcut to turn that on and off quickly. Uh, what we did here is explode the mesh into faces, and those faces are meshes themselves instead of actual faces. Like uh, these will be T triangles and then three numbers between brackets that comprise of the vertex. Uh, that should say uh, contains the index of the vertex that should be in it. Uh, long story short, just use the explode and you, know, you get meshes that are actually faces. Uh, what we want to achieve, we want to color the faces with wherever they correspond within the image. That makes sense. But the way that mesh coloring works is it colors by vertices. vertices. Which means that we have each face, if you can see mesh, 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 V3 and F1. F1 means one face, the V means the vertex. Uh, because we have triangles, each triangle is comprised of three points, three vertices. So for the coloring, we need to color all three vertex of the same color that belongs to that face. What we can do that is. We need to um, get the coloring information from our image sampler and we can start by doing a center face oh, face normals. What this allows us to do is it gets the center of each triangle and the normals but we don't need the normals so we can just ignore that. So now you can see we have the center of each triangle. Now, the output of this are actually points, and points based on a coordinate system that we've set using our rectangle. So as you can see, like 3,983 is actually within the domain of uh, from 0 to 4,016. So you will not find an X in this list that is higher than 4,016. But what we've done in our image sampler is the domain we have not changed. It remains 0 to 1. So what we're going to do is we need to map the coordinates here from uh, 0 to one of these domains to 0 to 1. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to deconstruct the point. Deconstruct the point. Uh, so that we have the x's and the y separated. The z is 0, so we don't need that. 
Uh, the next component we're going to use is remap numbers. V is the source, the value to map. Sorry, uh, the value to map is not the source. The source is actually this one. Uh, and then the target domain. The target domain is default 0 to 1. We'll leave it at that because that's the number you want to map it to. Now the source is what's the domain of uh, of our coordinates in the x. Well, it's actually our let's actually rename this to width our width slider. We can enter height and mesh size. Oh, that's automatically name. That's good. Uh, we connect it to the source. We do the same for the y value, but we connect it to the source of the height. So now our values are remapped to 0 to 1. 0 0.9. Uh, and we can reconstruct the point using a construct point and plug in the same values as that. And now we can plug the points into our image sampler because that's what the image sampler needs. It needs points that exist within its 0 to 1 domain or whatever domain we set it because we left it at 0 to 1. That's what we're going to be using with, uh, working with. Now, what we get out of here is if you want to know is color information in terms of RGB because that's what we set in the default settings. That's RGB settings. Uh, we'll leave it at that. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to uh, have to reconstruct our mesh. So we're going to do a mesh construct using this new color information. So we let's set this aside first. Uh, to reconstruct the mesh, we need the same vertex and the same face as uh, this one. So we can do a mesh deconstruct in order to get those information out of this one. Vertex will be the vertex and the face will be the face. And so the last step will be to connect the color information to the color input of the mesh. There we go. Now we have our first rough mesh. Uh, now you can uh, go here and play with the mesh size in order to get the right mesh that you want. I think right now the solution is still okay, 87% uh, meaning half a second. So one second this needs to calculate. But if you lower the mesh size, meaning you make it finer, the time that you need increases exponentially. So I'll be watchful, I'll be careful in uh, adjusting this one. So maybe I'll put it to 40. Yeah, this looks okay. So um, for the first part of this video, I'm going to stop it here and we'll pick it up in the next video. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, ways that we can implement in order to refine the facial features that we see in, in, in the original photo so that our discordization opponent component can take that into account and mesh that accordingly so with that said i'll see you in the next video and have a good one